switching gears, we changing the game, we're going to another class right now. Now we're going to be talking about Ramadan, inshallah. Okay? Ramadan is in less than five days, depending on the sign of the moon. Some say five days, some say four days. Allah Allah, let's get ready. Let's get situated. Okay? So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, the month of Ramadan is coming up. Yesterday was the 24th of Sha'aban. Today is the 25th of Sha'aban. Meaning that every month can have 29 or 30 days. So today is the 25th of Sha'aban, meaning there's four days left. But if it's 30 days, then it's five days left. Okay? So we're going to Ramadan. The first thing we should must understand is that Ramadan is the fourth pillar of Islam. Ramadan is the fourth pillar of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa said, Buni on Islam, Allah khams. Islam is built on five foundations. Right? The first one is the Shahada, the second one is the Salah. The third one is uh, zakah. The fourth one is fasting during the month of Ramadan, and then the last one is Hajj. Okay, so fasting during the month of Ramadan it is the fourth pillar. Without this pillar of fasting, if you believe that you don't have to fast, one who doesn't fast, he doesn't care. He said, "I don't care." You fall out of the realm of Islam. You don't fast, or you believe that you don't have to fast. You are a kafir. In the hadith of Ibn Abbas, bin al -an, he said, Urul Islam wa qawaidu din salat shahadatan an la ilaha illallah wa salat wa sawm of Ramadan wa man taraka wahidatan min hunna fa huwa kafir. So in the statement of Ibn Abbas, bin al -an, there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, and the qawaida, the foundation of the deen is three. Number one is the shahada that you bear witness that there's no God but Allah. The other, the wa'ida, a foundation, is the salah. The other one is Samu Ramadan. Fasting during the month of Ramadan. Waman taraka wa'ida tamin hunna. And if anyone leaves any one of these, for who are kafir, he is a kafir. So we said if his deen is built on foundations, mainly three foundations the shahada, the salah, and fasting. Anyone who leaves off fasting is a kafir. Okay. Allah states in chapter 2, verse 183, Allah states, A'udhu billahi bin shaitan razeem, Kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala al-ladina bin kabilikum, la'allakum taqtakum. Allah says, A'udhu billahi bin shaitan razeem, chapter 2, verse 183. Allah says, Oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you. It has been made mandatory for you. Just like it was made mandatory upon those who came before you. La'allakum, so that you may be, or by chance, you may be of those who obtain taqwa. Again, Allah Subhanahu says, O oh, ye who believe, those who want to be of the mu'mineen, those who want to have iman, those who want to be saved from the hellfire. You don't want to be dipped in the hellfire. The Muslim can be dipped in the hellfire. But the mu'min, the believer, won't be dipped in the hellfire. They will go straight to heaven without being uh, uh, questioned or burned. This is the ultimate goal. We want to be mu'minin or muhsinin. We want to have iman or isan. We don't want to just be Muslims. We don't just want to be lip service Muslims and don't follow the works. The mu'minin, those who have amal, those who work good deeds. Rasulullah SAW said, there is no iman without amal. There is no iman, there is no faith without works. Right? Just like it says in the Bible, faith without actions is dead. So Allah SWT says, O oh, you who believe, those who will follow this up with some type of uh, 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 obedience, fasting has been prescribed, it has been made written, it has been made mandatory upon you. So thus Allah SWT tells us in this ayah, it's mandatory, it's mandatory, right? It's wajib, right? And anyone who doesn't do it, anyone who leaves doing it, is a kafir, a disbeliever. Take you out of the realm of Islam. Okay? Then Allah SWT says, he made it incumbent upon you just like he made it incumbent upon those before you. So Allah SWT is telling us that fasting is nothing new. We know that there was many pro uh, profound prophets that fasted. We can go to Moses. Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Right? We're told that Jesus, when he was tempted by the devil, he, would, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Right? We're told when Mary, when she was pregnant, she had Asa alayhi salam. Right? It said that when the people came to her, she didn't speak because she said she vowed a fast to not speak, to not talk. This is something that's nothing new. Just like Moses, Isa, Mary, they all fasted. These are examples of people that fasted. So fasting is something that all the prophets did, right? 
we're doing fasting during the month of Ramadan because it's something that everybody does or everybody did. Also, Allah spoke to says, so that you may be of those who have taqwa. Okay? So taqwa, Allah spoke to said that he made fasting mandatory for us so that we can have taqwa. Right? We want to gain God consciousness. The word taqwa means shield. Right? You want to shield yourself from Allah's punishment. You want to shield yourself from Allah's anger. You want to shield yourself from the tricks of shaitan. Right? You want to shield yourself from sin. This is taqwa. When you put your force field up, when you put your shield up to protect you, how do I have taqwa? How do I protect myself? How do I shield myself from Allah's anger? How do I do that? By obedience. So I'm shielding myself. I'm putting up my taqwa so I become obedient. I want to do everything that I'm supposed to do and I stay away from all that I'm supposed to do as much as possible. This is taqwa. So Allah said that fasting during the month of Ramadan is a shield so that you, you obtain taqwa. And taqwa means to shield yourself. You want to put your force field up. You want to put your shield up. You want to put your protection up. During Ramadan, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to re rejuvenate the body. Right? You're trying to reboost. You know what I'm saying? Everything that you got going on. If you're feeling down, if your iman is low, if you know you're feeling confused, okay, now is the time to reboot. You know, you're going to 30 days of rigorous reading, rigorous praying, rigorous fasting, you know, contemplation, self, you know, evaluation. This is what you do during the month of Ramadan, because at the end of the Ramadan, you want to gain taqwa, you want to gain the shield, you want to gain fear of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, Fasting is like a shield, like a shield used on the battlefield. Fasting is like a shield, right? Like a shield that is used in the battlefield. So when you're on the battlefield, the only thing protecting you is what? Your shield. So Allah SWT says that fasting is a shield mainly to bring down your carnal desire. The Prophet Muhammad said that those who are young, right, they, they're full of, of vigor, they're full of energy. But they can't get married. Allah Subhanahu said, "Cure or curb your carnal desires, your lust, and your passion by fasting. Right? It'll help you to lower your eye. It'll help you to lower your gaze. Right? When you fast, you won't be thinking about this doom. You won't be thinking about the flesh. You won't be thinking about your carnal desires. Right? Fasting is like a shield, like a shield used on the battlefield. Right? It helps you to protect yourself. Because most of the time, if you're fasting," You won't be susceptible to doing things that you would do if you weren't fasting, right? No, Ramadan, man, I feel, man, I can't do that, I can't do that. I can't turn on the TV, I can't listen to that. I can't, man, I'm fasting right now, man. I got to, you know, nah, man, I ain't supposed to mess up my fast. So it helps you, it protects you. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, anyone who fasts one day, he will be shielded from the hellfire for 70 years. 70 years. Every day you fast, it takes you 70 years away from the hellfire. Okay? So every time you fast, you get removed years away from the hellfire. You want to get as far from the hellfire as possible. Okay? So every time you fast, you're removed 70 years away from the hellfire. Also, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the one who fasts, Allah will make a khanda. He will make a trench, a barrier, the distance between the heavens and the earth, between him and and the hellfire. So Allah SWT said, the one who fasts, Allah will make a trench. Everybody know what a trench is? You put like a very other thing. He will put a trench in between you and the hellfire, the distance between the heavens and the earth. Okay? That's a long distance. You want to be far away from the hellfire as possible. Okay? Again, we understand that the definition of Ramadan means to burn, right? Or to purify. During Ramadan, you're burning and you're purifying yourself, right, from not only the toxins in your body, but also the, the, the stinking thinking and the ill norms that you have, you know what I'm saying, inculcated into your life. In Ramadan, you purify yourself with the heat. You purify yourself with digging deep. Just like you purify gold or you purify silver, you put it in the heat. You burn it to burn off the impurities. So the same thing with Ramadan. Ramadan is a burn where you're trying to burn off the impurities. You're trying to burn off that jahaliyyah. You're trying to burn off that stinking thinking, the days of old. And inculcate what Allah wants you to inculcate because now you're trying to obtain 
Taqwa. During the time of Ramadan, you are supposed to be striving to acquire Taskiyah to Nafs. Taskiyah to Nafs means the purifying of your soul. Taskiyah to Nafs also means to master your soul. Right? Like some people say, they get control of your nafs. Right? Meaning gain control over your nafs. Gain control over your emotions. Gain control over your core desires. Right? Taskiyah to nafs. Your nafs wants you to be defiant. Your nafs wants you to talk back. Your nafs wants you to be like, oh, well, I don't care. That's your nafs. Right? In Ramadan, you're trying to purify Taskiyah to nafs. You're supposed to purify and learn how to master your nafs where you don't move with emotions. The Prophet Muhammad so, so said that it's not strength that you get someone to pick them up and throw them on the ground. He said, but strength is controlling your anger when you're angry. Knowing not to talk or say nothing when you're angry. Ramadan Mubarak comes from the word Baraka, which means blessing. Ramadan Kareem comes from the word Karama, which means to be exalted or to be generous. All right, so basically it's just a reply. Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. Ramadan Mubarak means Ramadan, bless Ramadan. Ramadan Kareem means have a generous and exalted Ramadan. It's just, it's just, it's just a reply. Okay, so we're trying to gain mastery of our nafs, mastery of our desires. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked by one of the Sahabas, "Ya, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, give me some good advice." He said, "Fast, because there's nothing like it. Tell me to do something good." He said, "Well, I'm telling you to fast. Go fast." there's nothing like it and all the things that is entailed and all the things that you acquire when you fast there's nothing like it right it lowers the eyes and it pacifies the desires and the lusts when we do ramadan ramadan those 30 days or those 29 days is like a boot camp right it's intense training you know just like when you go into the army the marines whatnot they go through a boot camp six week boot camp and they're vigorous <laughs> they're doing all this stuff same thing with this dean 30 days, 29 days of vigorous training, vigorous zikr, vigorous reading Quran, vigorous standing up at night, getting up early in the morning, eating your sahur, doing the iftar, taking care of record, uh, uh, everyday things, but yet you're not even eating or drinking, okay? So you're going far beyond. So this is like a boot camp. Allah states in chapter 2, verse 185, chapter 2, verse 185, Allah states, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim." Shahr Ramadan, al-ladhi unzila fihi Quran, hudan lil-nas wa bayinatin min al-huda wa al-furqan. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "And during the month of Ramadan, it is the month in which was sent down the Quran. The Quran was sent down in the month of Ramadan." We're told in Hadith that all the books of old. The book of Moses, the book of Jesus, the book of Abraham, all of the books of old, they were all revealed in the month of Ramadan, but on different days of Ramadan, one on the first, one on the 13th, right? So all the books of old were all sent down at one time in the month of Ramadan, right? To the lowest heaven. There's a place in the lowest heaven where there's an angel that is in control of the book. It's called the, it's called the, uh, Lao bin Mahfuz. It is the guarded book. Where everything that's been already written is in this book. Okay? And so they have this book and it's already written there. So in this lower heaven, we're told in Hadith that Allah spoke about he revealed all the books at one in one day. He revealed all the books, everything was revealed, but then Allah made these books sit in the lowest heaven where there's an angel that distribute that distributes the revelation. So even though it says that the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. We know that it was sent down in piecemeal over 23 years, right? So I'm saying, well, if it was revealed in 23 years, well, how could it be sent down in the month of Ramadan in 23 years? Because it was sent all the way down, the whole book and the whole totality to the lowest heaven where there's angels that watch over the books that Allah has revealed. Remember, they was already written. So it was in the book. He said, this is in a book that is written. So in the lowest heaven, all of the revelations came down at one time, but then they were disputed or dis, uh, distributed throughout the land through the prophets whenever Allah wanted them to come down to heaven, come down into the earth. So the original book was still in the, in, 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 the, in the heavens, guarded by the angels, but that which he allowed to be sent down through time, it came later on, but it was already revealed and sitting in the lower heavens. Does that make sense? So Allah Spoken says that the month of Ramadan, it is the month in which the Quran was revealed and sent down. It is a guidance 
for mankind, right, it is a clarifier of the guidance, and it is a porkan, it is a criterion between what is right and what is wrong. So the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan, we're told that it was revealed on Layla Fukadu, right? Layla Fukadu is called the night of Fukadu, or the night of power, or the night of decree. And in this night, which is during the month of Ramadan, Rasulullah saw some said that there's a night in the month of Ramadan that if you catch it and you stand up and pray during it, you'll be forgiven of all of your sins. Uh, we're also told in that night that whatever is decreed for you for the following year, the angels come down and they uh, bestow upon the color and write down what's going to happen for the following year. So it's good, it's, it's, it's emphasized or it's recommended that you make a lot of dua for this night because whatever is decreed for you for next year is coming on this night of color. And if you're praying for good, inshallah, Allah subhanahu will give you good. We're also told uh, that this this night of later to color, it's better than 60 years of the battle. It's better than 60 years of worship, okay? So it was revealed in the month of Ramadan, on later to color. Again, all of the books were revealed during this month on different days. Then Allah subhanahu wa it is a guidance for mankind. It is a guidance to save them from the hellfire and to save them from shaitan. And he said, it is a clarity of guidance. It is a criteria between what is right and wrong, right? The emphasis on recitation and reflection of Quran. We gain correction, we gain reflection. We understand that this book is the criteria of what is right and wrong. So therefore, during this month, we're, we're, it's emphasized and, 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 and emphasized that we try to read the whole Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa divided it into 29 or 30 parts. And if we read each part for every day of Ramadan, then we will have finished reading the whole book. Other religions, they can't boast to say, well, I read the whole Bible, or I read the whole, whole Old Testament. But as Muslims, we're encouraged to read the book at least once a year, right? How would you be a Muslim and say that you believe in the book, but you ain't never read the book, or you don't even know what's in the book? So Allah's brother, that makes it incumbent upon us that we read the book once a year, because this is a knowledgeable religion. This is not just a blind following religion. This is a religion in which it is, we prove all things, and we come with dalil, we come with evidence, so therefore Allah says, Read the book once a year. Okay, so there's emphasis on this. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Siyam, which means your fast, and the Quran, the recitation of the Quran, will intercede for the slave on the day of judgment. Siyam, your fasting will say, My Lord, I prevented from him food and desires during the day. And so make me an intercessor for him. And the Quran will say, I prevented him from sleep during the night, so make me an intercessor for him. Then Allah will grant him the intercession. So Allah subhanahu wa said, your fasting, however Allah subhanahu wa does that, says your fasting will come on the day of judgment. Your deeds will come in the form of a man. And they will say, I'm, I'm his fasting. He fasted for me. So therefore, this I prevented him from doing certain things in the day. I prevented him from looking at certain things. I prevented him from eating. So therefore, because I prevented him in the, in, in the dunya, I, I ask that you prevent him from the hellfire. So all your good deeds of fasting, they will turn into people that will speak for you. And in the same hadith, it says that the Quran, your recitation of the Quran, it will emulate or become a man or a person that will speak to. And say, well, he used to recite me. He used to follow these guidelines, and I kept him, I prevented him from sleep because he was reading, so today prevent him from the hellfire. So two factors or two things that can help you on the day of judgment that will plead for you, that will intercede for you, is your fasting, right, and your recitation of the Quran. So this fasting can prevent you from the hellfire every day in 70 years. Okay? So again, Siyam and the Quran will be intercessors for the slave of the day of judgment. Also, the Prophet Muhammad said, Whoever fasted Ramadan with Iman, with faith, and hoping for Allah's reward, you want that reward. You want him to forgive you of all your sins because you know this is Ramadan. This is the opportunity to forgive of all of your sins. Right? Whatever they may be. Big, small, fat, tall. All of your sins can be forgiven on this month. Right? So everybody's hoping for Ramadan. Man, I mean, Ramadan's here, man. I, got, man, I need that. I need Ramadan because I need to be forgiven of all of my sins. So Allah SWT said, whoever fasted Ramadan with Iman, with faith, and hoping, right? They got to believe it. You're believing it to receive it and hoping for Allah's reward, then all of his previous sins are forgiven. 
You're doing it with faith. You're doing it because you believe in it. And you're doing it with the hope and, and the motivation, man, that I will be forgiven of my sins. You believe it. So you're going to, so you're going to receive it. When you believe in it, you're showing that you believe in it by what you're doing, by working towards it, by striving for it, doing everything that you're supposed to be doing for Robert. Man, I need, I need, I need to be forgiven of all my sins, man. I'm not watching TV, man. I'm not doing none of that. I'm not listening to the radio. I'm not watching those stupid videos. I'm not watching YouTube. Man, I'm up, man. I, I need that. This is Ramadan. I'm trying to get forgiven of all of my sins. How am I going to be forgiven of all of my sins if I'm still doing the same things that I was doing? I'm talking too much. I'm backbiting. I'm gossiping. I'm cussing. You ain't just getting to knobs. You ain't purifying yourself. You don't have no mastery over your knobs, your carnal desires, and your emotions. That's what Ramadan is for. Also, the last that I said, all deeds of Adam are rewarded seven, ten times to seven hundred times, but Ramadan is for me, and I will reward it how he wishes. And I will reward it how he wishes. All deeds of the son of Adam, your prayer and all these other things, you do that for yourself, to save yourself from the fire. He said, but fasting, you're doing it for me. So in your fasting, I will reward you however I like. And another hadith said, this deed, you might have received 10 good deeds for doing it outside of Ramadan. But because of Ramadan, I might give you a million good deeds. He said, I'll be more Ramadan however I like. I got things that you can't even imagine. I got Rahma that you can't even comprehend. I got Badakas that you can't even understand if you believe, right? As one thinking, so shall he be, or so shall she be, okay? Also, the Prophet Muhammad some some said, two people rejoice after fasting. They rejoice at the iftar when they break the fast, and they rejoice in meeting their Lord. Two things that the one who fasts, he will rejoice. One, when he breaks his fast and you taste that nice cool water or you taste that nice date or that piece of watermelon that tastes better than anything you ever tasted before because you just fasted for a long day. Taste buds activated everything. He said this will be one of the things that you will rejoice on that food. Mm. And he said the other thing that you will rejoice on is when you meet your Lord, meaning that those who fast, they'll be in the Jannah, they'll be in the paradise. Another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the smell that comes from the mouth of the person who's fasting is better than musk. And we're told in another hadith that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that the best smell is musk. The smell of paradise will be musk. The best smell for the Muslim is musk. And the person who's fasting, when all those acids are coming up in the bowels of his body and it's coming out of his mouth and he's smelling like, ah, 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 ah. Well, <laughs> some, some said that that smell is better than musk. Even though it stinks to us, but to Allah, he loves that smell. Alhamdulillah, what I mean. Okay. Last hadith, the Prophet Muhammad some, some said, in the Jannah, in paradise, there was a gate. And the gate of that door is called Rayyan. And those who fasted will enter it. There's a gate in paradise called al rayan And all those who fasted will enter it. And no one other than them, those who fasted, will be able to enter it. It will be said, where are those who fasted? They will get up and enter it. And none will enter except them. And when they have entered, the gate will be closed and no one else will be able to enter it. So there's a specific gate or door of paradise that's called Rayyan. And the only ones that will be able to go through that door, the only ones that will be able to partake, whatever's on the other side of that door, whatever blessings, bounties, that the things that it says that you can't comprehend, your eye has not seen, your ear has not heard, whatever it is, there's something on the other side of that door. The only ones that fasted, they'll be able to partake on what's blessings on the other side of the door. There's different levels. Remember, there's different levels of agenda. There's different levels of paradise. Everybody's not going to be on the same level of paradise. Just like everyone's not going to be on the same level of the hellfire, I hold to be loved. Some people are going to get worse than others. Same thing with the Jannah. Some people are going to get higher levels in the Jannah, right, based on their actions. This person, he does all of these things. That's why I lost what says, and race in his deen to good deeds. Race one another. It's a race. They see who can be first place. Who can get first? Who's going to win? Who wants to win? Whoever wants to win, it says, and race one another. You're going to race out with your good deeds. You're going to do more than the average. You're going to go far beyond, right? Because you want to win. Why do I want to, win? Why do I want to win? Because Allah says, and race one another in good deeds. Compete with one another in good deeds. We're supposed to be competing to see who can do the best. It says, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr and Umar, they used to compete all the time with each other to see who could do the best deeds. They used to compete all the time. 
right? Abu Bakr would do something. Umar would come right after him and try to outdo him. And right before he knew it, Abu Bakr did something else and outdid Umar. He's like, man, he always beats me, right? Because they used to race one another in good deeds, okay? So alhamdulillah, that's it for today. We have another uh, part on this next week. But just a brief recap on the things we went through because Ramadan is coming up. Um, Ramadan means burn. It means to burn the impurities off the body. It means to uh, burn away the jahiliyyah, burn away the stick and thicken. All right? Understand that Ramadan is the fourth pillar of Islam. It's mandatory. It's wajib that we do it. When Rasulullah so said, anyone who leaves off uh, doesn't do or leaves off this pillar of Samu Ramadan, that they're a kafir. For who are kafir? Okay? This is not life. You got brothers that say that they're Muslim, but they're not fasting, they're eating. But who are kafir? Not my words, but Rasulullah said so. Chapter 2, verse 183, Allah says that all you who believe, fasting has been made prescribed for you, it has been made mandatory for you, the same way that it was made mandatory to those before you, right? You see that Musa, Jesus, Mary, many prophets fasted, Daniel, okay, and you, right? So that you may be of those who obtain Allah's taqwa. Through fasting, to gain taqwa, to gain reflection, to gain correction, to gain your shield, right? Alhamdulillah, uh, We learn that arham means the womb, because this is a place of mercy. Uh, we also learn that fasting, uh, Rasulullah saw some said, Ramadan means to burn, burn impurities, uh, it gains closest to Allah, the taqwa, your shield. Uh, Ramadan is a boot camp, right? You're going vigorously for 29, 30 days. Prepare yourself for the rest of the year. So however you do your Ramadan, that's how you're going to come out of Ramadan. That's how you're going to continue the rest of your year. You were sluggish. You was lazy, right? You didn't even put in the work. That's how the rest of your year is going to be. Ramadan is the time for you to step it up, right, and get it right and correct so that you can go through the rest of the year, you know what I'm saying, with more vigor and more iman and more taqwa. Also, the Prophet Muhammad said that during Ramadan, the doors of Jannah, the doors of paradise are open, and the doors of the Jahannam, the doors of the hellfire are closed, and the shayateen are locked up. You know what I'm saying? The shayateen, it's talking about the shayateen of the jinns. They're locked up, but there's still shayateen among mankind still walking around on earth, all right? Shayateen, devil advocates, could be from the jinn or from mankind. So Allah supposed to say that during the month of Ramadan, the gates of paradise are open, right? And the doors of hellfire are closed. And the shayateen, the devils, they're locked up, okay? The jinns will be locked up during Ramadan, right? So therefore, anything that you do during Ramadan is because of your nafs, because of something that you've been doing, right? It's in the system. During Ramadan, you're going to see what you made of. Right? Because whatever's in your body, you're going to be gurgitated. You're going to get agitated. You're hungry. You know what I'm saying? You're thirsty. You know? So when you agitate, that's when you say what's really on your mind. <laughs> so whatever's in your nafs, whatever's in your character is going to come out during Ramadan. That's going to be your time. <laughs> right? What happened? So the door of, of paradise open. The doors of the hellfire closed. The devils are locked up. Um... Again, it says Siyam and Quran, they will intercede for you on the day of judgment. Right? Right? We fast from sun to sundown. Inshallah, we're going to talk about that next time. Okay? But inshallah, this is just part one on fasting. Any questions? Just one thing, you know, we, we fast from sun to sundown. And we stop eating when fudger comes in. Not when you wake up to make fudger. You make some spoiled eggs and scrambled eggs. And, okay, but I ain't, I ain't praying for you yet. Once Fudger comes in, so you have a prayer schedule. Like right now, Fudger comes in comes in at like 5.15, 5.10. But we pray 5.30 at the masjid. I'll have to stop eating at 5.10 because that's what time Fudger came in. Even though Fudger at the masjid is at 5.30, Fudger has already came in. Thus, that means the starting of the fast. People will try to tell you, well, I didn't pray fudge yet. I can still eat. The sun's up and everything. No. If you miss your sahur, guess what? You missed your sahur. If you didn't get up before the time and you got up hungry, that's on you. We got alarm clocks. We got phones. We got, we got all kinds of electronic devices.